Insightful podcasts by informative hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Entertainment, a podcast series taking a deeper look into entertainment and media. Your hosts, Joseph and Michelle Whalen, a husband and wife team of pop culture fanatics, are exploring all things from music and movies to television and fandom. Welcome to Insights and Entertainment. This is episode 65. Skywalker in the Shadows. <laughs> I'm your host, Joseph Whalen, and my loving and motherly co host, Michelle Whalen. Aww. Happy Mother's Day weekend, by the way. Thank you. How are you doing today? Uh, not too bad. It's chilly. <laughs> it is. It's, it's <laughs> unseasonably know, cool today. You know, I, I went out to do our, our grocery pickup. Uh, you know, now I don't. Go into the store, uh, the farmer's market. I, I do curbside. Right. And just, you know, standing outside, I was like, wow, it's it's like winter again. <laughs> when that happen? <laughs> Indeed. They did say the next uh, several days is going to be like uh, November weather here. Yeah, so. yeah. Definitely feels like it. So parts of the Northeast hey, getting good, uh, 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 snow, snow, actually. <laughs> hey, it's a great weekend to stay indoors. Yeah, oh, good, like... good thing we didn't have any place to go, right? <laughs> It's like every weekend. It's Groundhog Day all over again. Yeah. So today uh, we got a busy show mm -hmm. on Disney Detective. We'll be talking about the uh, return of the wonderful world of Disney Movie Night. Uh, we will talk about a new Haunted Mansion war game <clears throat> that uh, materializes <laughs> later this year. That's funny. That was good. Uh, Pixar also has a cooking channel, so you can cook up those pixels of fake food, I guess, right? Oh, that's funny. Uh, then in our Star Wars Insights, the uh, wonderful uh, Taika Waititi is set to direct a new Star Wars film, which I think everyone is excited about, mm -hmm. <clears throat> given his past performance mm -hmm. with the Disney Associated Movies. Uh, Lego Star Wars, the Skywalker saga will pack in nearly 500 characters. I guess we've got some exciting gaming news or is this a movie? Gaming. Okay. Well, Lego's got movies. That is true. Know, that so is you true. never know. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> then in our entertainment news, um, an interesting, uh, uh, move from, uh, Emmys now, not, uh, uh, they're banning Oscar-nominated projects, which should be an interesting twist. Mm -hmm. Then the Tribeca Pil uh, Programs Drive-In Series for Films, Sports, and Music. We'll talk about that. Then we will see our first look as Mark Hamill embracing the dark side in one of our favorite shows, What We Do in the Shadows. Then we'll go on to our insightful picks of the week. And uh, I think we have a good show lined up for you today. Mm-hmm. Shall we get into it? Sure. All right. Go for Disney Detective. So Disney announced earlier this week that they were reviving the wonderful world of Disney. Um, that, you know, anybody growing up, you know, even before, you know, our generation uh, remembers, um, you know, Sunday night was kind of the wonderful world of Disney. You had, you know, Walt Disney, you know, introducing different things. There were movies that he would do, different specials and things like that. Um, and not that long ago, they actually kind of brought it back again um, for a limited run. Um, so now they decided to do a four-week um, Wednesday night presentation of... Um, wonderful world of Disney, and they've picked four very different movies to to show. Um, so this Wednesday, or I'm sorry, Wednesday the the twentieth. So not this Wednesday, like two Wednesdays uh, from now, they're going to be showing one of our favorite newer uh, movies, Moana. Uh, so that'll be the first one that comes up. Uh, then a week later, they're going to be doing the Thor. Uh, sequel, Dark World. 
Um, then the week after that will be Pixar, uh, Disney Pixar's Up. And then f- the following week will be Big Hero 6. So it'll be May 20th is Moana. May 27th is Thor The Dark World. Um, June 3rd will be Up. And then uh, June 10th will be Big Hero 6. So kind of nice that they're, you know, showing these, you know. So for a Wednesday night, uh, they all start at 8 o'clock Eastern time. Um, So, you know, sit down with the family and, you know, have some, some movie time. Kind of uh, a very heavy animated lineup they have there. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah. Kind of interesting that they threw Thor yeah. in there, you know. And especially Dark World, because that was like one of the worst <laughs> Thor movies. Maybe they're hoping to bring back some life to it. I don't know. <laughs> I, I guess, you know. I'm surprised they they didn't go like more old school, like, you know, do like Snow White yeah, or like I could totally Cinderella. Yeah, I could doing that. You know, the first couple being the classics. Right. Kind and then of you move do, it into more yeah, of a modern. Yeah. Well, and maybe, you know, they're kind of sprinkling a little and see how well it does. And, you know, and again, because we already know there's going to be issues with, you know, um, TV shows, you know, not being. Um, you know, filmed right now, you know, for, right, for next like all season, your scripted television all, shows you know, all the scripted production. stuff, even, you know, even the reality stuff isn't, you know, isn't going to be done, you know, either. I could totally see them, you know, doing, you know, keeping, you know, Wednesday movie night, you know, going on, you know, throughout the whole summer even. So we'll see, we'll see. Yeah, so. and it's, I, you know, you couldn't ask for, a, you know, a better time. It's not like you don't have a captive audience. Right, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Not like anybody's really going to bed early. That is true. <laughs> on a Wednesday night. So, That's true. So that'll be kind of interesting to see. Very cool. Well, tell us about the new Haunted Mansion board game. I was just a little excited about it. <laughs> just. Just a little, like I was trying to I'm figure out. I'm surprised that didn't how... <laughs> warrant wearing a, a Haunted Mansion shirt. Well, though. I am wearing zombie, so, you know. Um, yeah, I should have put on. <laughs> should I get a pair of ears? Because I got a few <laughs> over there, in case you couldn't see. Um, so, one of, you know, the very popular toy brands out now is, is Funko. Um, you know, pr- almost everybody probably has some sort of Funko Pop. Even you know? I have Funko Pops. And, and you don't, don't like even them. like them, you know. Um, so the new board game will be based on the beloved Disney's Haunted Mansion. And this all new afterlife adventure will arrive this October. Uh, it's Call in the Spirits game promises family fun for ghosts and mortals nine years old uh, or older. Um not much really has come out about the game. Uh, really, the only thing that you could find online was the artwork um, for the box. Um, and it's rather familiar artwork. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, so, you know, obviously the Haunted Mansion is no stranger to board games. Um, for those, you know, that don't already know, uh, Clue came out with, uh, a haunted mansion version, as well as uh, the game of life. There's also a haunted mansion. Uh, Which there's version. a certain irony to that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so according to um, you know some of the uh, uh, website information, it uh, is a game that requires two six bodies and lasts for about a half hour. Apparently, bodies. I like. Yeah, that. yeah. Isn't that cute? Uh, apparently, according to the listed contents, each player receives their own game piece. And a reference card. A trio of game-specific card decks keeps the adventure moving. There's the Hitchhiking Ghost deck, Ghost deck, and a Haunt deck. Um, And additional intriguing ingredients uh, are uh, a clock, Hitchhiking Ghost tokens, instructions, and, of course, the game board. Um, So really, again, not too much, you know, information, you know, is out about it. Um, there are 99 unique ghost cards that feature uh, illustrations from the original Haunted Mansion. Um, and then, you know, the bat, uh, the classic bat, um, you know, is a one of the game pieces, you know, that can move along. So, again, not much coming out. Um, the one website that I, I did find, it was actually to, you know, for, for, uh, 
vendors to to purchase, you know, and it basically said that like June something is, you know, like the end of June is when you could place your order for the October, you know, delivery. So I was almost thinking like, hey, should I just buy a case of them? <laughs> Do they they don't have own. a release price on it yet, do Mm-mm. they? No, no price. Nothing, really. So. Interesting. You know, it's a shame because this is one of those things that would appear at Toy Fair or right. one of the other toy conventions. Yeah. You'd be able to get a sneak peek and get some yeah. hands-on and, and some pictures. And yeah, but right now... the convention's not going on, we don't even get that advantage. Yeah, yeah. So, so hopefully they'll do like a little pre-release or something oh, like I'm that. Oh, I'm sure there'll be something, and I'm sure you'll find it, you know... You know uh, Disney obviously wasn't hurting when, you know, all of the anniversary stuff came out last year. You had Hot Topic and Box Lunch right. was selling it. Target was selling, you know, various things. So I'm sure it's it's hopefully not going to be, you know, a hard to find Well, and it's nice item, to see so. with all those things mm-hmm. and now with this that Disney's finally producing the Haunted Mansion products that fans like you want to see. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, the other thing, too, to kind of go along with this is that, you know, old school gaming along with, you know, regular, you know, video games and things like that, there's an upswing um, going on with that because people are home, you know, they want to do something together as a family or or whatever. So, you know, I... You know, a couple of weeks ago, they were talking about it on the radio, how, you know, they, they you know, sat down with their family and, you know, played this game. And, and, you know, there are certain games that you could play with other members through Zoom, you know, and stuff. And people were like, oh, that was such a fun game. I want to, you know, get it for myself. And you couldn't find it. You know, they would try and buy it through, you know, Target or Walmart or something. And, like, they're out of stock on a lot of board games. So... You know, obviously, hopefully by October, we're back to a little bit of a, a different mode than we're in now. But I could definitely say, hey, we, we got into, you know, doing family game night. Let's continue it. And, you know, especially if you're a fan of Haunted Mansion, here's another perfect game to, to add to your collection. So. Yeah, very cool. So tell us about Pixar's cooking channel so of course we've been you know mentioning every week about different recipes for for things uh since everybody's uh home and everybody's trying different things so now it seems that pixar's youtube channel actually has a series called cooking with pixar where they have recipe tutorials inspired by their latest films and all your favorite characters are kind of there to to help you uh along the way um so from the movie onward there's a a, um a video of ian and bartley lightfoot showing you how to make the classic birthday cake um or you have forky from toy story 4 who does uh pizza from pizza planet um and then of course you have remy who will show you how to make um you know some classic ratatouille you know so it's kind of cute you know um i didn't watch any of the videos so i don't know if it's more you know kid centric or you know um but obviously um kids are, are getting more involved in in cooking now you know because uh they're home with their their parents and stuff and you know yesterday's podcast on insights into teens was you know kind of a, a cooking based and you know we did videos of, of maddie you know helping to cook so um you know i think now's a, a good time teach your kids how to cook and have you know some pixar characters uh help you out so yeah, this was this was kind of a cute tie-in mm-hmm. you know we we did cover uh cooking and the benefits of cooking mm-hmm. for for kids and you know the benefits of family dinner and stuff so uh, this is definitely one of those things that I think would uh, certainly help during quarantine time, mm-hmm. and even outside of quarantine time. It's great yeah. family fun and it's to kind of keep to it going, connecting you know. and stay together mm-hmm. type thing. Yep, very cool. Well, that was all we had la- on uh, uh, Disney Detective, correct? Mm-hmm. So we shall move on to Star Wars Insights. For over seven years, the Second Sith Empire has been the premier community guild in the online game Star Wars The Old Republic. With hundreds of friendly 
and helpful active members, a weekly schedule of nightly events, annual guild meet and greets, and an active community both on the web and on Discord. The Second Civ Empire is more than your typical gaming group. We're family. Join us on the Star Forge server for nightly events such as operations, flashpoints, world boss hunts, Star Wars trivia, guild lottery, and much more. Visit us on the web today at www.thesecondsithempire.com. Go for Star Wars Insights. At least this time I waited because <laughs> I knew it was coming. So, some exciting Star Wars news, maybe, possibly, you think? A little bit. <laughs> so, one of our favorite actors slash directors um, who's, you know... I don't know, just been, you know, pure gold, I guess, when it comes to various different projects, has been uh, tapped to uh, direct the new Star Wars movie. And that would be, and I'm totally going to screw up his name, so. Taika Watiti. Yeah, thanks. Watiti. for some reason I can do his last name, I can't do his first name. I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know. Um, so the filmmaker, obviously behind Thor Ragnarok and Jojo Rabbit, will direct and co-write the new Star Wars movie for theatrical release. Uh, Oscar-nominated 1917 writer Christy Wilson uh, Carnes will pen the script with him. Uh, in January, the Hollywood the, ho the, 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 the Hollywood Reporter broke the news that Lucasfilms was courting him. Uh, so no release date has been set for the project, which was announced on StarWars.com to co uh, coincide with May the 4th, uh, the unofficial Star Wars holiday, obviously. Unofficial. It's official. <laughs> you know what it is? It's official for Star Wars fans. It's a unofficial holiday. <laughs> In this house, it is. Um, so uh, he already... Um, has done obviously work with the Star Wars franchise. Um, he, you know, worked on The Mandalorian, uh, not only, you know, acting in it, but also directing. Uh, we've only watched one episode of um, The Mandalorian documentary uh, that came out this past week. And, you know, watching him, you know, the behind the scenes stuff, he's such, you know, a fan and, you know, uh, loves you know all things you know Star Wars and and whatnot. So you can you can just see you know the that in him you know that you know he's gonna do you know a good job obviously with this. Um, and you know fans obviously hearing the news you know we're so excited about this because you know they know it's in the hands of somebody that will you know, take care of it. Um, so Disney still has a December 16th, 2022 date carved out for an untitled Star Wars feature, but nothing obviously, you know, has, you know, come out whether this is the project that he's going to be directing or writing or if it's something, you know, the next movie, you know, that, that comes out. So kind of exciting news and you know and he was kind of funny with you know his posts on instagram and twitter was like oops gets the cats out of the bag now you know so he was even you know funny about it so yeah he has a, a special kind of brilliance to him I mm -hmm. think. um <clears throat> he he took thor ragnarok mm -hmm. and took it in a direction that nobody expected right which really revitalized a franchise of movies that nobody liked any of the previous Thor movies. Mm -hmm. And and Ragnarok was just a masterwork. Just with the humor mm -hmm. and the quirkiness yeah. and everything right, about right. it. And he, he brought sort of the same thing to The Mandalorian mm -hmm. with the episodes that he's worked on that he's written and, and directed. And he didn't bring comedy to it, but he made the storylines more communicable mm. like 
you know, you can understand the humanizing of, of some of the characters in here that he brings to the project mm -hmm. itself. Yeah. So he, he kind of brought that sense of humor in and brought a level of realism that you don't normally see in, in Star Wars mm -hmm. movies where you get to connect to those characters yeah. more. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so very exciting news. Unfortunately, the other disappointing piece of news associated with Star Wars movies is that apparently Disney is sticking to its guns. Mm, yeah. <laughs> that uh, they're giving Ryan Johnson a, right. a trio of movies after that debacle of a Star Wars movie that he ruined in Last Jedi. So hopefully with talent like uh, Taika Waititi coming in mm -hmm. and revitalizing the franchise. Yeah, yeah. And what, you know, John Favreau and everyone else are mm -hmm. doing on The Mandalorian. Hopefully right. Disney will see the light at the end of the tunnel there and realize right. that the distorted dystopian vision of Star Wars that Ryan Johnson had for it really is not the way that you want to go. And you're not going to be successful with it. Sure. And uh, hopefully they'll pull the reins back on that and give it to somebody who's a little bit more capable of carrying on the saga. So tell us about Lego Star Wars. So Lego Star Wars, the Skywalker saga, is set to be the biggest Lego Star Wars yet when it launches later this year. Um, so you, one of the, the cool things is that you'll be able to start the game at any point in the saga. So that's really loud. <laughs> yeah, that was actually supposed to have been muted already. Anyway, so you'll be able to start the game at any point in the saga, so you can skip the prequels if you want, or you know, even jump to The Last Jedi if you want. Um, it'll include new space uh, missions, and a whole new... Uh, the whole game is brand new, so don't expect previous LEGO, you know, Star Wars things to be, you know, put in the game. Um, according to um, one of the directors, uh, there will be nearly 500 characters in the game, with many of them being playable. Uh, he said that, you know, basically they tried to get a yes from almost every character, um, and, you know, one will even be the Phantom Menace's uh, Yaddle, which is the Yoda-like alien um who nobody really knows a whole lot about but she'll even be you know part of the game um you know he uh they also said you know that we think that it'll be a success with you know one s subtle moment in particular that during a luke and kylo ren fight scene that was just so funny you know that you know people just kind of laughed as as they were playing it so you know i know sam used to play you know you know, the various Star Wars, like, I think Maddie even She's done, played Carol for, have played. Yeah, sure. you know, so this might be a, a fun one to, to add, you know, heck, I might even, you know, play, especially if you can, you know, be all these different characters and if you can, you know, mix, you know, prequel with, you know, past and, That you know. was the thing that was always fun about the uh, Lego games in general mm -hmm. is that you got to be all these different characters. Right, right. And as you played through the game, you would unlock different things, mm -hmm. and there was a sense of achievement as you played the game, right. this reward system that you would get. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so it had a lot of replayability as a result mm -hmm. of that, which was very nice. Yeah. It wasn't <clears throat> one of these games where you play it, you beat it once, and then you're done with it. Right. You had a lot of reasons to go back and play mm -hmm. it over and over because the currency system in the game is one that – you don't just earn as you're playing through the game. You go back and replay the same chapters over and over, and you continue to earn cogs, which is what their credits are right, in there. Right. And you use those cogs to un unlock different characters mm -hmm. and, and traits like that. So uh, it's a very well-done game franchise, and it's nice to see that they're keeping it going. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So that was all we had with Star Wars Insights. Mm -hmm. uh, let's come back in a minute with uh, our entertainment news of the week. Insights into Teens, a podcast series exploring the issues and challenges of today's youth. Talking to real teens about real teen problems. Explore issues from braces to puberty, social anxiety to financial responsibility. Each week, we talk about the topics concerning today's youth. 
We look at how the issues affect teens, how to cope with these issues, and how parents, friends, and loved ones can help teens handle these challenges. Check out our video episodes on youtube.com backslash insights into things. Catch our audio versions on podcast.insightsintoteens.com or on the web at insightsintothings.com. So tell us about Oscar nominated nominated projects being banned from the Emmys. So in response to the blurring lines between theatrical and video on demand distribution, the Television Academy on Thursday clarified that Oscar nominated projects would no longer be eligible to compete for Emmy awards starting in 2021. Now, I was actually kind of confused a little bit about this because I didn't think anything that was nominated for Oscars were in the same category as things that were nominated for television. I, you know, I, I, I figured, you know, movies were movies and television, you know, was television. Um, so obviously this move coincides with the Academy of Motion Pictures, Arts and Sciences recent announcement that some streaming films would be eligible for the 2021 Oscars. Um, is more a blow to the documentary space than really any of the other features. Uh, for the last several years, the overlap actually um, was more with the nonfiction products, um, you know, and that was really where it, it stemmed from. It was, you know, that's that's the niche where uh, I guess, you know, you could be um, nominated for an Oscar, but also... Uh, an Emmy and it was really more again for the, the documentary. So basically now they said for 2021, So basically all the stuff I watch. <laughs> yeah, really? You're, you, you are the documentary person. Um, you know, so, you know, they, they said, you know, that the television Academy supports the recent decision from the Academy of motion picture arts and sciences to allow feature films originally intended for theatrical distribution, but made available via streaming or video on demand during the current pandemic crisis uh, to compete in the 2021 Oscars. Further, the Academy, uh, the Television Academy ruled in March that effective 2021 programs that have been nominated for an Oscar will no longer be eligible for Emmy competition. So I guess, you know, with I could see it more, you know, for everything that's being streamed because it's not a theatrical release. I guess maybe there were some people that were like, oh, well, now because it was streaming, it's television versus. Well, and I think that's sort of the line that's being blurred here in some situations right. where you have things that are being released on Netflix and Amazon mm -hmm. Prime right. and Apple and all these other streaming right. services now that are movies mm -hmm. that are being streamed. Right. So really. They need to figure out what streaming is. Right. And that seems to be kind of the growing problem here. Mm -hmm. Are streaming, are movies that stream movies? Mm hmm Or are they TV shows? Right. Or do you have a completely separate set of awards associated with just streaming now? Right. You know, you've well, got television and, awards, you've mm -hmm. got stage awards, you've got movie awards. Right. Maybe you need to have streaming awards now. Yeah, because, you know, the other thing, too, is, you know, there are those made-for-TV movies. Yes, there are. That are, you know, only on, you know, the, the networks, and those would always be eligible for Emmys because they... Um, they and they it don't would always in they don't appear in theaters, but they, there was always a special category. You know, it was um, you know like specials. You know, so like your you know your one offs basically. Right. You know, was kind of well, that. But now you have you know Netflix, like you said, that is doing the theatrical release, so that they could be nominated. You know, for Oscars, where now they're saying. You know, and I really think this boils down to the problem that we ran into last week with mm -hmm. you know the Oscars. Right. These these groups need to get together and, and figure out what streaming is to them. Right. Yeah. You no. Know? And either they include streaming mm -hmm. programming in their 
award shows. Right. Or you have separate online streaming award shows with it. Right. Now, I could totally see, you know, a series. You know, if, if you have more than one episode, you're a series, and then that can be... The you problem know. that you're going to run into is we're rapidly approaching this critical mass of streaming media now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Where the bulk of the money mm -hmm. for arts and entertainment is going to come from online streaming. Mm -hmm. You're going to see, you're immediately going to see a drop off in theater revenue. Mm -hmm. You're already seeing a drop off in television revenue as people cut the cord. Right. So, what are you going to do when the primary source of funding for actors, directors, producers, and all these projects mm -hmm. become streaming. Yeah. You're going to say, oh, none of that stuff is eligible for right. awards? Right. That's not going to fly. Right. So they, all these awards organizations, these bodies, have to get their act together now. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because you're probably a couple of years away from that becoming the primary funding mm -hmm. source yeah. for all of this, this creative content that's mm -hmm. coming out. And if they don't solve it now... You're going to hit a wall real quick right. here, and you're no, going to have to yeah. make a decision without without much choice. Yeah. So, so tell us about uh, Tribeca program. So Tribeca Enterprises, IMAX, and AT and T said Wednesday that they are partner partnering to launch Tribeca Drive In, which is a summer program series of new and classic films, movie, and sporting events. It'll take place in drive-in theaters and other exclusive venues nationwide starting on Thursday, June 25th, uh, and the lineup will actually be announced in the coming weeks. Uh, so they said, we're taking the spirit of Tribeca around the country by creating a safe environment where audiences can come together and enjoy the sense of connection found by going to the movies. Uh, this was a quote from uh, Jane Rosenthal, who is the uh, Tribeca Enterprises and Tribeca Film Festival co-founder and CEO. Um, so the majority of cinemas, obviously, across the country have been closed due to the coronavirus pandemic since mid-March. While some states are experiencing uh, soft reopenings, most major chains say that they still will remain closed until Hollywood Studios ensures a steady stream of new programming. Uh, the earliest theatrical blockbuster on the schedule is Christopher Nolan's Tenant, which is for July 17th. Um, many drive-in theaters have obviously remained open since they are, you know, naturally suit, uh, you know, uh, social distancing. Uh, Trolls World Tour, which was made available to rent on video on demand, um, had a release date uh, where it actually also played in 21 drive-in theaters uh, across the country. Um, and, you know obviously did very well between, you know, the drive-in theaters and, you know, the home on demand. Um, so they're also partnering with IMAX, which uses the digital remastering process to enhance the image and sound experience in addition to helping uh, curate the, the program. Um, so this is kind of, you know, interesting. This is, you know, the next step. Uh, you know, in, in what we said, you know, bringing people together safely to, to enjoy a, a movie or, you know, a filmed concert, you know, experience you're, you know, in the safety of your own car, um, you know, and they're able to, to get it out to, to a, a big audience. Yeah. You, know? you and I had talked about this over the mm -hmm. last couple of weeks where drive throughs is really, you know, we don't have, we've got one that's within driving distance right, to us right. and that's about what, 40 minutes away. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but you know, New Jersey's the home of the, mm -hmm. the, the drive through. The drive we, we, we were yeah. the first place to have drive throughs and drive ins, drive ins, sorry, <laughs> drive through movies. They're for the really <laughs> quick ones. Um, so yeah, I mean, they, they were born here, mm -hmm. um, and, and they died out because uh, largely because of the cost of the land. Right. Um, cause you need to have a lot of land to, to and, fit the cars, you and know, you, you need to have the land. And the problem was the limited show times that you could do cause you don't show them at night, obviously. Right. Right. Um, and during the summer you can't start it until like late, nine, yep. nine thirty. So, yeah. So this might be where people start to return to go, go out and mm -hmm. see those movies here. Yeah. Yeah. So the fact that they're doing an organized attempt like this mm -hmm. to bring other content to it. Right. I think that's kind of a unique approach to yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. And it's and I'm neat. sure there's, you know, uh, and I can't imagine, you know, I'm sure they can come up with, um, you know, temporary areas, you know, to do a drive-in, you know, where... Well, sh- how about all these mall parking lots where I was, the malls aren't open? Well, I, I was just saying, between mall parking lots or defunct, you know, uh, shopping areas, you know, there's tons within New, New Jersey. I'm sure, sure there's tons within, you know, other yeah, areas of the country. Drive throughs no, drive-ins now. i got to stop saying drive throughs Right. I like those fast movies. <laughs> Drive-ins don't require the same infrastructure that they used to right. for sound equipment because right. everything's done wirelessly with exactly. radio that, transmitters. That's what I, I was going to say is that you don't need to, you know, back in the day you used to have the little speaker that you, you know, you hung on your window. Right. Um, you know, now you, you know, you change the radio station, you know, And this to might do be it. coinciding <clears throat> at, a, at a perfect time for the nationwide decline of shopping malls mm-hmm. yeah with large tracts of land available you figure you you know assuming the shopping mall near us closed down right um you could easily put four theaters in, i was in just there. thinking if you did like one on each side yeah. even you know and and all the entrances you know you block that off so that's how you pay yep. and basically you decide whatever movie you want to go to you don't even have to say you know, oh, I want to see this one. Yeah, you know, you drive one around. This screen two, screen. You drive three, around yeah. to you know whichever area. You know, okay, you know, turn your radio station to this channel for this movie. This one to this one. Yeah, you know, and I could totally see that. You know, and and you could even you know, obviously bring in you know food trucks because I know there are some areas where they're doing like drive up you know food trucks even right, right you know so you could probably even you know set something up so that you don't even have to get out of your car you know the biggest thing would be like you know restrooms you yeah. know because if you're at the, the movie for you know oh well, but for that you do what they do at music festivals you right. just bring in a portable restroom right exactly you you, you know you get the get the porta pots and you know and and just everybody you know be mindful of, of everything but yeah you could definitely see you know think about how many you know at, but you also have to make sure everybody's staying in their car you don't want people true you know true. running around or you know stay in your car you know don't get out you know because really you could park next to each other you don't have to worry about you know parking your car six feet away you know from somebody right. else but right. i think it would you know definitely help to to boost it it might you know, be how the we economy s- that we might be the start of that effort to get things back to normal mm-hmm. moving through yeah so so the last story we have here is Mark Hamill embracing his dark side. Tell us about that. <laughs> so Mark Hamill was taunted by the dark side while playing Luke Skywalker in the Star Wars franchise, obviously. But now he can finally embrace it in a new project. Uh, Hamill will po- portray an ancient vampire in our one of our favorite series, What We Do in the Shadows. Uh, and Entertainment Weekly had the first look at the character, Fangs and All. Uh, the episode titled On the Run is set to air on May 13th and will introduce a vengeful enemy from Laszlo's past who appears without warning to settle a personal debt. This causes Laszlo to flee his home and go into hiding. Uh, Mark had tweeted some very nice things about the movie and the show when it was, you know, in its first season. Uh, so we under so he understood the world of our show, and this was uh, a quote from the executive producer and show- co showrunner. Uh, and also, he seemed perfect for the part because he has this gravitas to play an ancient vampire uh, rival, and he's not afraid to be silly, and he knows a thing or two about an extended fight scene. Uh, so Mark. Mark had actually said that I remember it was Father's Day and I had my three kids over and we were picking a movie to watch. And he had suggested Life with Father, which was an old school, um, but he liked it as a kid. And, you know, and then his kids rolled his eyes at him uh, and they said it's a cornball. So I asked what they wanted to watch. And his one son suggested what we do in the shadows. Uh, He had never heard of it. But when he explained what it was, that it was a reality show about vampires, he was like, all right. And he was 
completely unprepared for what he saw, which was really when we first saw the movie, we were kind of like, oh, what is this? You know, Um, so completely unprepared for what he saw. And it was so incredibly clever and compelling. It had all the elements of a horror movie, yet it combined the magnificent with the mundane. And, you know, who thinks of these things? He said he had to stop multiple times to really absorb what he has seen. And it's one of his favorite movies now. Uh, So when he was asked to, you know, play, you know, a part in this, you know, he jumped at at the chance, um, you know. So most of the scenes are um, with the one character. He said the real, you know, the challenge of working with him was just trying to keep a straight face when he would start improvising. So each line he would say, you know, he just kind of lost it and, and you know, w- would be cracking up with it. So. Again, it's one of our favorite shows. If you've never watched it, never watched the movie, now's a perfect time to to jump into it. It's, you know, season two is kind of halfway through or, you know, just, uh, yeah, probably halfway through yeah. by now. We're definitely a couple of episodes uh, behind in it, but definitely looking forward to, to the episode with, with Mark again, Hamill. And so. another, again, another tie-in with uh, Taika Waititi and, yeah. and Star Wars. Yeah, here. absolutely. Just, so. it all blends together. That's right. So nicely. One big happy family. Yep. So What We Do in the Shadows airs on FX on Wednesday at 10 p.m. Awesome. So that was all we had for entertainment news. We'll be right back with our insightful picks of the week. Go for your insightful pick. Uh, So my insightful pick... Uh, is a limited run series, I guess is what they call it, uh, called Hollywood. It is an American drama web series um, starring a whole ensemble of characters. You had uh, Dylan McDermott, uh, Jeremy Pope, Holland Taylor, uh, Jim Parsons, Patti Lapone. Um, it was created by Ryan Murphy and Ian Brennan, uh, released to Netflix on May 20th. Uh, it's a mini series. Uh, about a group of aspiring actors and filmmakers during the Hollywood golden age in a post-World War II era trying to make their dreams come true. Uh, The series received mixed reviews from critics who praised the performance of the cast and the production value, but criticized the tone, the writing, and the artistic license taken with it. Um, So the show follows... The, the actors and filmmakers, you know, uh, trying to make it in Tinseltown. Um, and each character offers a unique glimpse behind the, uh, the gilded curtain of Hollywood's uh, golden age, spotlighting the unfair systems and bias across race and gender and sexuality that obviously continue today. Uh, Hollywood exposes and examines decade decade decades woo, old power dynamics and what the entertainment landscape might have looked like if they had been dismantled. So what's interesting about this is they have a lot of characters who are real life characters. Um, you know, like Rock Hudson is one of the characters. Um, uh, some other, you know, various actors. And then they have different characters who are based off of other characters. Um, but what's kind of interesting is they, you know, for, for some of the actors, there were myths about them and rumors about them. Like nobody really knows if that was how that person's life really was. And in this, Ryan Murphy, you know, twists it and shows you know, what if Rock Hudson had come out as as gay from the start, um, which obviously didn't happen in in real life. In real life, Rock Hudson, you know, it wasn't until he came out and and said he had AIDS in, in the 1980s that anybody knew, you know, there were always rumors about him, but nothing concrete. Um, so here it's, you know, what would have happened to his career had he, you know, come out from the very get-go um you know it it also uh has a lot with with race you know what if you know a black actress actually had a lead in a role and wasn't just the maid um 
you know, so it kind of, you know, takes that approach. Um, so again, you know, some of the characters are fictional, some of them are, are true, and it also ends up giving you their happy ending. So uh, Anime Wong is one of the, the characters that, that pops up. She was a real-life actress, um, and her story was kind of a little tragic um, because she was up for this part of an Asian woman, had screen-tested for it, was perfect for it. They ended up giving it to a white woman, and that actress actually won an Academy Award for the picture and Anime Wong never really acted again. In this version of it, she gets that second chance. She plays a character that's just a woman, you know, no stereotyping, and at the end wins an Academy Award, you know, so so it, it's you know, it, it's it has that happy ending, but yet you know, it's kind of tragic because, you know, things haven't changed so much in, in Hollywood. Uh, you know, there's some darkness to it, which Ryan Murphy is is known for, um, you know, but but still, you know, a, a good story. I, I happen to be a fan of Ryan Murphy. I, I usually enjoy his various television, you know, things. So I, I, I liked it, even though, again, I, I afterwards I, I read all these different, you know, uh, articles where the critics were just kind of like, eh, you know, they didn't like it. But you know what? There, you know, there's always something for, for everyone. So if you're fascinated by the golden age of, of Hollywood and, you know, what it was like to be a contract player, you know, they show a lot of, of that. Um, you know, there's a lot of sexual undertones to it, you know, because a bunch of the characters are, are, are gay. And, you know, you can see what it was like in, in the late 40s having to hide it and, and, and what they had to do, you know, and even, you know, you know, various race issues and how that, you know, affected it and, and whatnot. So, you know, overall, I, I enjoyed it. I would definitely, you know, recommend it. So Okay, cool. Good pick. Thank you. So my pick this week is, uh, surprise, surprise, not a documentary. <laughs> and um, only because I told you about this, it. <laughs> this was one that you told me about, and I went and watched uh, episode one of it, because um, I wasn't allowed to watch anymore after watching episode one, because you wanted to watch it with me. Right. <laughs> um, this is Upload on Amazon Prime. In 2033... Humans are able to, quote, upload themselves into a virtual afterlife of their choosing. When computer programmer Nathan dies prematurely, he's uploaded to the very expensive Lakeview, but soon finds himself under the thumb of his possessive, still-living girlfriend, Ingrid. As Nathan adjusts to the pros and cons of digital heaven, he bonds with Nora, his living customer service rep, or, quote, angel. Nora struggles with the pressures of her job, her dying father who does not want to be uploaded, and her growing feelings for Nathan while slowly coming to believe that Nathan was murdered. The show's interesting, one, because it takes a lot of the technology that we have today, like self-driving cars. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it projects what they're going to look like in the future. Mm -hmm. And they're seen as these infallible, you know, but quirky where you can sort of hack them mm -hmm. devices out there. But right. there's a belief that they're these infallible machines. Right, right. Uh, and this notion of uploading your consciousness is sort of like the Matrix, the matrix in reverse. Mm -hmm. Where in the Matrix you wanted to get out of the computer, here you're getting into the computer as your body is failing and you're you're going to die soon. And there's one particular scene in the first episode where it sort of poses some interesting philosophical debate mm -hmm. where Nora's father is apparently you're you're led to believe is terminally ill with something, he's gonna be dying soon. She wants using her employee discount right. to get him uploaded into the network so that she can continue to interact with him after he dies. And he is of a tra this traditional belief 
that when he dies, he's going to go to heaven and be with his wife. Right. Because she was never uploaded and she's waiting for him in heaven. Mm-hmm. So it sets up, I mean, it's a, it's a comedy. Right. And it's very funny. There was a lot of, a lot of really great little scenes like, you know, you get breakfast until 10 o'clock in the morning and right. then at 10 o'clock in the morning, it all disappears. Right. So they have to hack a coffee machine to get donuts or something right, like that. Right. So it's it's really funny and cleverly done the way they mm-hmm. do that. Yeah. Um, but there's some potential. There's tremendous potential for some thought-provoking programming mm-hmm. here uh, and the philosophical idea of heaven and earth and right. you know all that stuff. So we've only watched one episode of it so far. Mm-hmm. I'm looking forward to watching the rest of it. But I really enjoyed the first episode, and it and it really got me hooked. Being a technology guy myself, mm-hmm. I see a lot of the technology that's there, and and how the writers and the and the producers have sort of envisioned where today's technology is going mm-hmm. to go. Mm-hmm. And the other thing that I thought was kind of interesting about it was the fact that you know even though you've moved on. You can still communicate with your your family, right? You know, you can still make phone calls and and talk to your loved ones. Like that just kind of seems, you know, creepy and all. Yeah, way. yeah. <laughs> like, so how are things going? You know, like. Uh, well, and good, it's funny from know? <laughs> coming from an IT background where a power outage means that my database is offline. I can only imagine what happens to these entities that are in the right. network in the event that there's a service outage and I have to imagine they're going to yeah we'll address probably you know, that we, at some we point might take that. but yeah it was definitely you know I saw a commercial for it and I was like hmm and I watched the first episode and that was when I said something to you knowing it was that that quirky comedy right. but had that that technology you know yep. background I was like you know what I think you're going to like this so no, it's, it's yeah. very cleverly done so that's uh Upload streaming now on Amazon Prime. Uh, We'll come back and we'll give our uh, contact. Mm -hmm. So that's it for today. Mm -hmm. Uh, You can reach out to us, subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, TuneIn, Overcast, Pocket Cast, Castro, CastBox. You should have little things pop up as you do. I, yeah, I can't push <laughs> buttons that fast. Um, you can reach out to us directly. Um, we stream five, six days a week on Twitch at twitch.tv slash insights into things. You can email us at comments at insights into things.com. You can catch us on the Twitter at insights underscore things. On YouTube at youtube.com backslash insights into things. You can get links to all of our content, video and audio, show notes, etc., etc., on our website at www.insightsintothings.com. And if you don't want to see any video and you don't want to read anything and you just want to listen to us you could find us at podcast.insightsintoentertainment.com and if you love the evil empire and want to jump on facebook you can catch us on (laughs) facebook at facebook.com slash insights into things podcast and that's it that is it another one in the books stay safe everyone bye bye